In this video, I fit the 711 shifter from 025 Motorsport. I'll show you how it all works underneath with a five-speed box, what you need to do to take everything off, fit the, the new shifter and make the adjustments as well. So this is the 711 shifter from 025 Motorsport. Now, Ian has designed and engineered this beautiful uh, piece of kit that I can't wait to fit to the van. Um, and what it is, is it's a replacement for your five speed or a four speed um, gear lever. Now I've got the five speed version here because that's what my, my um, gearbox is. So this is um, the original levers. Um, this is actually a replacement solid core one that I fitted a couple of years ago. Um, but I've had enough of it because getting into first and reverse is just a pain with this. I hate it. It's a horrible experience and it's given my elbow a bit of an ache as well. So I can't wait to get rid of that. Um, all the stuff, all of this part, all of this, um, the uh, onion bushings that you get in there, all that is done by this. So all with this ball and this spring that we've got here. So all handled by this. There's nothing, none of that guff at the bottom anymore. It's just we can just, it's all down to the shifting into the, the guide pieces down there. And I'll show you all that. Um, so what Ian provides us with is obviously the shifter. And this is it. I'll give you a, a nice 360 gorgeous piece of engineering um, and we also get uh, these bits to just to, to fit in um, and that allows us to bolt it down into the van now um, the van has two um, uh, screws that we coming up that we can screw into um, but we need to drill in some extra ones so there's two extra ones that need drilling so Ian's provided with this little protection sheath so we can fit that in drill the hole and then we can fit the other the other two holes in as well so um, can get that nice and secure in four points across across the van. Um, the other bit you do need is the spring. So the spring um, off your original lever, you'll need to take off and we're going to fit that to this. So that goes in there. And that's for when we're pushing down into reverse and then it'll click back up again. And that's that. So yes, can't wait to fit this to the van. Really excited. I've had enough of that horrible thing. Um, this is going to change my life, I think. In this next bit, I'm just going to show you how it all works underneath the van. So how the gear lever interacts with the box underneath and the, um, the guides through to the linkage halfway down and then into the gearbox. Okay, so 10 millimeter on this side and then 13 millimeter on this side. So I've got these uh, new aluminium guides. Um, the ones that are uh, in the box that I've got are quite worn. And I'll show you those in a sec when I take them off. Um, to take them out, um, there's just two um, bolts here and they're 13 millimeter. So 
So you can see the wear across here, and that's where the um, the bottom of the forks rub against the uh, the guides. So it's just over time, it's just slowly worn away. Um, that's that one. And then that's the other one. See the wear here as well. Okay, so they just fit in the same position on both sides and then uh, the bolt just screws up. So it's the new guides in position. So this is what it will be like underneath the van. So um, the 711 shifter automatically resets into this center position, um, which is a big benefit. Um, and then when you've got the different gears, so it'll go across and then that's first. And then when we go into reverse, we're going to uh, push down on the lever and then go into reverse. So it'll bypass um, the bracket. And then we've got second gear over here and then third. And then we're going to go across and it'll be fourth and then fifth gear. So for um, the bracket, because of this weld that we've got on here, um, it just catches on the edge of that bracket. So we just need to file a little bit off that. Um, and then we've got to file a bit off the peg that's on the gear linkage that goes in here as well. So it needs one or two millimeter um, moved off that. And then uh, uh, just one or two millimeter off this edge as well. Um, so I'm going to do that. Um, and fit it and then we'll go from there so it's a 13 millimeter bolt there power file that edge and then a four millimeter bit of the corner piece as well okay so that's that edge piece taken off and then that corner as well um, hopefully that'll be enough and I can take a bit more off if needed. So just need to fit that back to the box. So it just hooks in there. There we go. So this is the reverse lockout peg here. I need to take two millimetres off the edge of that. Um, So I've just marked two millimetres on there, so we just need to go to about about there on it. So I'm just going to mark that with a pen and then I'm going to use my power file to just take that two millimetres off that, that leading edge there. I now need to fit the reverse spring, so that's the one where you, you push down to get into reverse, it's the one that pushes back. Um, so I have this one fitted to my gear lever, and that's that came with a kit when I replaced all of this um, a few years ago. Um, so what I've done, I've taken this one off, but what I've got is um, an actual, I've just bought a, a genuine uh, Volkswagen one. And this is the actual spring that was fitted originally. Um, so you can see the difference in these. Um, so this is the one that comes with a kit, that kit, um, but this is an actual genuine Volkswagen one. So I'm going to use this one on uh, the new lever instead. Um, and you can see uh, it's more tightly, it's got a lot more spring on that one, and this is a lot softer. So I'm hoping it's a bit more pleasant. That's quite aggressive, that spring. Um, so we'll see what that's like when, um, when we actually fit all that on. So to fit it to this gear lever, um, in the... Uh, with the original lever, you could actually undo um, uh, this um, this collar and then slide it off. But uh, because of the angle of this and the thickness, it doesn't work. So what we need to do is undo the bottom. Um, and what this also will show is how you can adjust uh, for left left-hand drive uh, vans and right-hand drive. So at the moment, it's set in a right-hand drive uh, angle. So I'll be sitting on the, the right-hand side and this is where I can reach it. Um, but you can actually um, adjust this so it can work left-hand side as well. So another big benefit of using the 711 shifter. Um, so to undo this, I need to un, um, just loosen this locking nut here. So just loosen that. That's a 10 millimeter um, nut. And then we use the Allen key to remove the the grub screw. 
that this comes out. So there's one of those on each side. So here you'll see where it goes into the gear lever. Um, and there's different positions, so depending on if you're doing right-hand drive or left-hand drive, you can um, set it to different ones. And I'm just going to take this plastic sleeve off and then we pull it out of the main body. Um, so I'll just slide the spring on and then put that back into the main body. And then it's the plastic sleeve. And because I'm, I've got a right-hand um, side, a right-hand drive van, I want it to, the gear stick to bend this way. Um, so I'm going to use the um, indentations there and there. Yep. So that's in position now. And we've got the bend over to the right, and then we've got the, the spring. So that's our pushing down into reverse and spring it back. So now I just need to fit it to the van. Um, so I'm going to do it and drill the holes, and then we're going to attach everything underneath and make the adjustments as well. There are two bolts that we can screw onto here. Um, but we also need another two, so I'm going to um, attach it to those and then we're going to drill a hole in for the other two which will allow us to um, add these in from underneath and then we can have four corners of this plate so it's going to be a really nice solid um, attachment. So I'm slotting this through the plate now. Goes in there. So the big springs at the back or well, the front, <laughs> the front of the van, towards the front of the van. Um, and then these go in either side. And we can screw into them. Um, and then the, these are 13 millimeter. For the other two holes, Ian provides uh, this uh, brass uh, protection. Um, so we're gonna slot that in. And then we can drill a hole out there and there. Um, so I've got a, a six mil drill bit so we'll see if that's big enough um, and then see if that fits this one because of the spring on this side there's not as much clearance on here so kind of got it, I've just extended this a bit more to give me enough room A slight angle this one. So I'm just going to unbolt this and then take it all away because um, I don't want any of these metal filings to go anywhere near the ball joint. So there are adjustment bolts on either side which allow you to set the preload on the spring. So that means um, it's easier to move across when you're going left and right. Um, I'm just going to set it on the, the minimum and see how that goes. Um, but I can make it lighter if I need to, so I'm just going to set it there so it's just touching the spring. And then I'm going to lock it down using that locking up there. And again, that's 10 millimeter that one.
the peg is just catching on the on the, the bracket now. So we need to move the the linkage rod back so then that can sit a bit further back there. That's where we want it to sit. Just pop the gear knob on while we make adjustments. Um, so that um, peg is just catching on that bracket so I can't get across as I move it slightly back. So we need to adjust that. So that's first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and then cross and down into reverse. So we're just catching on that bracket. Um, so I'm going to centre this, so that's right in the middle. Um, I'm going to undo the linkage in the middle, uh, just behind the, uh, the fuel tank. And then I'm going to centre it at the gearbox as well, and then uh, readjust it, so it should be fine. So this is the linkage rod just behind um, the fuel tank. The fuel tank is just down here. Um, and this goes back and forth and, and twists the different ways. Um, so what we're going to do is undo this bolt here. Um, and then we're going to move these free from each other. So the gear lever end will be free and then the um, gear box end will be free as well. So we can get those uh, in that center position and then I can tighten this back up afterwards. What I'm going to do now is just mark on on here the current position on the spines. Just so if we need to reset it back to this, we can do. I'm pretty sure it's going to be very different anyway. See, and now I can move those back and forth so we can get the right position for both the front um, gear lever and then the other side as well. And you'll see they'll, once they're in the right position, they'll turn independently of each other. As well. So, for this end, we want, at the moment it's catching on there. So you can't get across at all. So what we need to do is move it forward a bit. So it's right in the middle of these um in the middle of them. Luckily this lever automatically goes back to the center as well, so it makes it far easier. Um with the old type lever lever you had to put in a, a block of wood to get the right positioning. What I'm looking for is just um, the centre position doesn't foul on that bracket. There we go. So nice and easy this end. And then uh, we're going to do the gearbox end now. So that's where it used to be, and now there's a, a bigger gap. So I'm now going to go to the gearbox end. Okay, so this is the gearbox end of the linkage. I want this just to sit just before it presses in. So it, again, it can move forward and backwards. Um, so this way, that would be second gear, that's third gear. And the centre part where it goes in, there's a gate, so that's where it clicks in. And then you can get the other gears, that goes this way, get the other gears that way. So we want it on that side and we just want, so there's a bit of pressure, there's a spring in there, it bounces back. So it's centre that way. It's just got a slight bit of pressure on there, so that's in a great position. The front, I'm just going to recheck, and then I'm going to uh, tighten up that bolt um, on in the linkage, which is which just sits just there. Uh, if you can see it, um, there's the the fuel tank, and there's the, the bolt there. So that hasn't moved. That's still in the centre position, so I can tighten it up now. So you see, there's a much bigger difference from the original lever. So that's where it was positioned originally and now there's a lot more spine showing here. Um, the, I might need to adjust it either way um, to get the other gears but this will give me a good starting point.
You see the position of that weld there. Um, only when I drive it will I know if there's enough clearance. I might have to take a bit more off that, um, just so it can get properly into reverse. Um, but I'm not going to know that until I actually drive the van. Um, but it's be it's a case of uh, taking this bracket off and just trimming that edge if I need to. So I've driven it around for a little bit and there's a couple of changes I'm going to make. Uh, first is I'm going to use that stronger spring on the return um, because what I've found is that when you go over speed bump it's actually clonking down the whole uh, gear lever because of the weight of it is actually clonking down. So hopefully that stronger spring will keep it in position. And then secondly I'm going to trim a little bit more off that return gate. So that bracket that's um, the stop that um, the, the weld hits. I'm just going to trim a little bit more off that because it, although it goes into reverse, it feels like it just needs a bit more uh, for it to be fully engaged. I've gone for an aluminium gear knob, uh, which fits onto the 14 millimeter thread, um, and it now looks like one of Terminator's limbs. But I like it, um, so I just need to take this off, and I can put the uh, the cover back on if it fits. It should be. It does feel like a shame to be hiding that beautiful engineered piece. So that's it. It feels amazing. Um, really happy with it. It's quite straightforward to fit, really. Um, and it's, it just feels a million times better than the original. Um, so things that I really like about it is that centre position that it sits in. Um, instead of flopping around, it's just it's like a modern car, it just resets into that centre position. And moving through the gears, especially like first and, and reverse, now feels very much like they've got equal footing. So again, like a modern car, they feel all the same. There's no like battling to get across anymore, which is, it feels really good. Um, it's got the short shift stuff built into it, so it's reducing the throw by about 40%, uh, if not a bit more. Um, so again, moving through feels a lot, it, it takes a, a lot less time, it's a lot quicker to move through it, um, and it feels nice and um, solid when you're moving through the gears in that way, so it does feel really good. Um, it's not a cheap piece of kit in, by any means, but if you put together the cost of a brand new gear lever, all the bits you need, like the onion bushings and the bits underneath, it's going to come quite close to that kind of cost anyway. But um, if you want to get one, you can get it through two, uh, 025 Motorsport Direct in the UK. And it's, if you're in the US, it's being imported by T3 Techniques. So check out their website if you want to get one. It's available in four speed, five speed and synchro as well. And as it's a universal fitment, you can um, have a right hand drive one or a left hand drive. It's, it's the same model. It just, it just make those adjustments as we saw in that video. So yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you have any questions, I'll try and answer them.